Croito is channel blight fluid. Yes, we're back at Minotaur Hotel. A sort of. Right now we're going to be joining P and Storm. We're going to be looking for the hotel rather than actually in the hotel itself. But there's plenty of stuff going on there we'll catch up with later. But for now, let's head back to the hinterlands. Wake up, lad. We have a hotel to find. Oh, what time is it? I thought of something. Sun's almost coming up. We have to prepare for the day ahead. Why oh, so early, um, sir? So I don't have any more time to waste waiting on your lazy ass. Now get up. My dad always lived by the phrase, God helps the early risers. I always calls it bullshit, and he always let me feel the buckle of his belt when he'd hear me. God could shove his help for all I cared. So if nothing else, Dad made damn sure I learned the habit from him. How long did it take for the kid to learn it from me? My insistence, he finally rolled out of bed will give me a sulky glare, as I noticed he'd been sleeping in the same outfit I found him in. One thing's for sure, I can't be walking around like that. Where did you get those clothes? Uh, second hand. It's all I got. There's only one place around selling clothes and they don't carry my size. Is there a tailor around? You don't think I got that kind of money? Hmm, how expensive is it? Well, expensive enough for a type that's welcome there. You were the charm, I ain't it. Shit. Well, we'll figure something out. Nini's Green told her we'd find the hotel after I deal with my grandpa's unfinished business. I'd visit the Colonel's estate to retrieve the, uh, the mortal remains. They get across from a lake and give them a proper burial. Is that how this sort of magic stuff goes? You have done something like this before? I have pacified or exercised spirits before, nah. I don't know more than most about how this sort of magic stuff works. I can tell something's off. There's not really much of a rhyme or reason to it. You need may be right, it's just... Oh, it sounds like bullshit, sir. You're right. I kept be sharp when he wanted to be. You said there's some weirdness way down in the valley, right? Yeah, folks talk about all sorts of weird shit going on there. Ghosts, headless mules. Even your people say the devil himself lives down there. Have you ever seen any of that yourself? Uh, no, sir. I don't make a habit of going there. It don't rain much here, but when it does, all the gunk pulls down to the bottom, so any good place to be. That's a lot of that area is used for salt mining. I don't like it when people poke around. Now that is odd. Salt's supposed to drive away bad magic, so it doesn't make much sense for spirits and such to appear in places with lots of it. Storm shrugged, pain and hamstrung between boredom, confusion and sleepiness. You live here all your life, right? Uh, most of it, yeah. Do you know we can talk to it gets more info? Does the freak of nature have any friends you can ask about any weird shit going on? I took a moment for, to pray for all the patience my dad never had with me when I got like that. Okay, smartass. Do you know of anyone we can talk with? Can probably think of a couple once we get on the road. He was stalling. He knew damn well I could see right through him. Well then, we better get going, huh? Oh, we're not going to go the tutorial, and I have gone through it before. <laughs> so we can choose the location to investigate. So we're going to start off with these interesting salt plains.
in the heart of the hinterlands, near its lowest point, is a vast plain where the salt mining company keeps all their production wood doing whatever they need to pack it and ship it. I'd seen the farm run far once with Dad, an endless stretch of cracked white that makes the very air around it cut one's throat. Back then, I didn't know enough to appreciate the importance of salt as a purification and cleansing agent for the occult. The entire field of it is a powerful thing indeed. Any place in the hinterlands might hold the problems that lead me to the Minotaur's Hotel. This had to be it. It's also where have a pond nearby. All the water flowing to the hinterlands ends up there, bringing all manner of dirt and trash with it. That kind of defilement too may bring about malevolent apparitions, which is promising in its own way as well. So, we're going to the Salt Plains? Yes, Salt has many occult properties, so perhaps that may give us a lead to the hotel. You don't have any weirdness ever happening down there. Oh, not really. Well, except for a crazy old man who wanders around those parts. He's some kind of hermit or some such. Every now and then I'd stumble onto him and we'd share food. He ain't a bad guy, just completely out of his mind. Interesting. Could you take me to him? You want to talk to the old wacko? Madness and insight often come hand in hand. Also, it's very rude you refer to him in that manner, so don't do it again. Okay, fine. What's this gentleman's name? Storm bit his lip and tapped his hooves to the beat of the song. Even as he seemed to rack his brain, he kept the rhythm. I don't know. Don't recall him ever telling me. I just called him old man. He doesn't mind? Nah, he's actually a real cool dude. He never gave me shit for being, well... Mine at all? Yeah, that. Interesting. Perhaps he's familiar with occult matters, then. Just tell me where to go, Storm. I've got a good feeling about this one. Aye, aye, boss. For an hour or so, we trek through the salt plains, checking each of the spots where Storm had encountered the old man before. Storm leapt from the top of a mound and slid down. I took a moment to breathe, feel the breeze while drinking some water and get my bearings. I stand on the heart and pile of salt and dirt, left out there from the last time the mining company had been by. It was about noon. The heat and that unending, sprawling whiteness were getting to me. Then I noticed, way out and behind, someone watching us. Too far and the surroundings too bright for me to catch any details. When I turned around, they were gone. Nearly decked behind another salt mound, or one of the straggly trees. I stood there, seeing if they'd come back out, but no such luck. Turned around, following Storm's example, and slid down. As I descended past the dune's peak, the figure rose up again, this time accompanied by two more. It's possible we've been followed. Yeah, sure. Shouldn't be anyone out around here this hour. Yeah, couldn't catch any details, but I saw one there, three shapes staring at us, about a kilometre away. And I saw another one of them, right behind me atop the dune, and just the right angle of my head blocked Storm from seeing it. Storm, don't move. Look me in the eyes and don't move. He still tried to fidget and look behind me, but I shook my head. Do you know the Ave Maria? Oh yeah, of course. Close your eyes and pray with me then. We both muttered through it once. The figure was still watching us. Storm cracked one eye open to peek at me. Again. Trust me, just keep going until I say so. The kid told through prayer after prayer with ease. Very get a syllable wrong. I followed along but kept my attention on the figure behind me. Prayer after prayer receded until our watch had shredded itself as a flower shed its petals under the breeze. An apparition. A weak one, though. How we found it? The hotel. Or maybe. Or something, otherwise a cult. Oh, he's safe. If you have him, Marie's rough to dispel it, then yes. What peculiar is the fact that this thing can cross a field of salt unhindered, which means it might not even be malevolent. That was when I realised my mistake. I was so preoccupied with what was behind me, I didn't check what was in my blind spot. 
that is, right behind Storm. I reach for my gun, just my fingers brush the grip of it. My little friend! Oh, sweet Jesus! Storm leapt towards me, blocking me from pulling my gun out. And you brought a friend. Oh, so much the friend is that thing, might be, that is. You almost gave me a heart attack. Oh, your fault. You should have seen me coming. You think I have eyes in the back of my head or something? Not you, no way. <laughs> now, won't you introduce me to your captor over there? Oh, yeah, so, all my answers. Oh, shut up, for a second. Storm, check your ear gauge. My, my, oh. It's active. And you? Me? How can you see through it? <clears throat> well, I'm above those part of the tricks you can, all kids do. Got a keen eye myself, you know. Much like you, so I'm sure you don't recognise me. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't recognise someone I've never met before. <laughs> That's so. What's your name, boy? The people call me P. And you don't recognise me? Me? After everything? Then I tell you to never come back. I'm afraid you got the wrong P. Might you be referring to my grandfather? Oh dear. He bonked his head with the butt of his hand. Why year is it? We've well, passed the two thousands. Oh, what a blunder I've made. Awfully oh, sorry, really, I am. Oh, what a mess. It's all kerfuffle for nothing. Now, please understand, it's just you and him smell and look her just the same. Such a sweetly chaotic stench. Please understand, it's been so long since I entertained any guests that I just got overexcited. Oh, I guess he is so nostalgic. How could I ever guess that I or the headless guard who walked just right into my quaint little home? He motioned modestly. Clearly, if it weren't for age, he would have gestured far more broadly. Straight out of the poems, yes? Now come, sit with me. Or my stench may attract all the maggots in this hall, but none shall bother our sweet Io. Oh, wait a second. You haven't answered my question about how you saw through Storm's disguise. I know I didn't catch that little jab of yours. Those apparitions following us. They were your handiwork, too. More like your cramps. I didn't put them here. No, sir. What? What to you? His cackle was combined with a cough. Strings of snot and phlegm burst from his mouth every gust of air. I mean what I say, what I mean, you bug-eyed headless giant. How do you... I can see just as much as you, Birdie. I'm a god. I closed my eyes. The image of that thing was really burned into every one of my feathers. Ah, oh, boss, don't be so rough with him. He just some crazy. Uh, we. Uh, I just some old man. We can just be odd like this sometimes. And he just more like. Well, he's harmless, boss. Just some poor old sick beggar. Beggar? I'll have you know I'm a hermit, sonny. I don't beg for the table scraps of the vermin. You beg for my food all the time. Ah, that's because you are no vermin. Just the unluckiest boy in this forsaken hole and not one of my subjects. Yeah, yeah. He's just poor and unhinged, boss. Completely harmless. Right, I don't think we'll learn anything about the hotel from him. This creature, this person, this spirit. Can he hear this or simply see me? He can keep himself veiled from storm while letting me see. Is he tricking the kid? What's his game? If he's as crazy as Storm says he is, will he just snap sometime and... Breathe. Keep a hold of yourself. A storm. Uh, this isn't a man. I'm a god. I am a fright, very sorry, sir, for intruding on your territory without permission. Oh, finally, some goddamn respect. Boss, what are you talking about? The greatest wonder of the hinterlands, the source of all purity and... 
began to laugh his head skull off. Well, all curses too. So, what's with the script this time? Are you going to do the whole I'm looking for the money so as to tell Rick and Roll all over again, just like we did to your grandpappy? You uh, know about it? Sure I do. I was just meandering along, minding my business and taking a leak, and he got pulled into it. I saw it all happen, I did. How do I get there? Ah, no shame at all, huh? You insufferable brat. You come to my territory to spell my apparitions, talk to me like I'm some mortal vermin, and you have the gall to ask me a question like that. You are so rude. Didn't even ask me how I'm doing. Not a damn word about my day, the weather, my skull, or my salt. He dragged his foot along the ground, kicking a few chunks and crystals my way. Couldn't even look him in the eye anymore. Well, fuck you. I could get you in there, I could. I'd know just how to do it. My bus driver told me how to get in. If you want any help, though, you'll need to pay back your debt. Please, sir, I'm sorry. What do I need to do? Oh, I don't know. I just want to be treated right, you know. Don't you think it's horrible being a godness forsaken heap of curses and salt? Worship it, you little. You can offer it too. Oh, I know. Be a dear and treat my skin for that terrible Christian prison, would you? What do you mean? He held up his hand where some stray bits of fur and skin hung from the knuckles like tassels. My skin, Birdie. I think they should be all around me. Those Christians took it from me and my dear, dear kids tried bringing it back. But your grandpappy got them all killed, right? He... He didn't know that. He had to... Yes, you come here walking, talking like a hot shit, but I see through you. Just a rotting drop of giant's blood peacocking around you with lineage and that millennia of defilement all around you. That's so I know your grandpappy, kiddo. He killed my worshippers. But and let me be honest with you. While well, you may be too much of a little shit to beg, I most certainly am not. If I still had any power, I'd curse you to become an arrowhead or something. But since I'm only a decrepit rotten god, I'll get me my pelt and I'll tell you how to get there, that hotel. It's in the hinterland's oldest church, or when it got flooded. I can't dive on down and get him myself. Oh, that Christian juice around there burnt me to the bone. But you, you little Greco something boy, I bet my left nut you could do it. You might need to do one or two of your disgusting rituals, though. I know there's some warding magic there, but in place that old wannabe witch using a certain peacock feathers as catalyst. So, just a little dive and pray them. Thanks, and well, I'll tell you how to get to the hotel. I got on my knees this deity of the hinterlands. I had to grit my teeth and swallow my pride to do it in front of storm. But you can't recover from treating a god like I do without some contrition. Well, now, what a good birdie. Put his hand with a sloughing off palm on my shoulder. I can only tense up and try not to retch. Do this one thing and we'll be friends, eh? And how about you, Storm? How's your day going? Uh, pretty damn weird, sir. Yes, yes, I understand. I do hate the sensation of a hundred eyes all gazing at me. Oh, it gives me the heebie-jeebies like you wouldn't believe. You think you can get this little piece of shit to do my errand for me? Well, I mean, he's my... just... Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on, sir. Yeah, you're a smart one. I'm sure you can figure it out. As for you, Birdie, I may be lower than dirt now, but I can still cast a curse or two. Well, you know it's my little friend, Jenna. I taught you a thing or two about what a bloody cycle of revenge really is. He kicked him into a cloud of salt, almost losing his balance and spinning himself around this time. Now go. I went from being unable to meet the tapir god's gaze to being unable to meet storms that he helped me up. And bring me a snack, too, when you get back. A god needs offerings. 
waved and called out. Stay safe, old man. A storm. Please don't tell a god to stay safe. It's improper. I felt like I needed to rush back to the hotel and hop in the shower to wash the stench of that friend of storms out of my nostrils. A storm was concerned about us having a good first impression of each other. A reasonable concern. During the night I kept driving with Storm looking out from the window. I went down an unmapped dirt road, slipping in between fenced properties, guided only by a failing GPS. We went on for hours. The horizon showed nothing except for crumbling homes, broken kills where their guts exposed the elements and failed farmsteads. Every dozen kilometres or so we'd see a writhing mass of wings as vultures descend on the remains of cows, horses and goats. We passed by only one house that was still occupied. A girl with long hazel hair shepherded half a dozen younger boys toward the candlelit doorway. Less than half of the boys wore any clothing, while the girl wore an oversized white shirt with the Virgin Mary printed on his address. She could be older than thirteen. There's already a bump on her stomach. As we drove past, I caught a shadow standing by the house's front door. A shirtless man following a car with eyes that burned like hellfire. The AC kept blowing on my face, cold and gentle, with a hint of lavender from the last time I'd washed the car. I tightened my grip on the steering wheel and felt disgust wash over me. Storm saw it too, but his eyes glided over it all just like the vultures above us. So, uh, we're just driving. I swallowed the knot in my throat. Yeah, it's driving. It's what the areas my grandpa searched the hotel all those decades ago. Dusk is a special time. Rituals formed at this hour are more potent, and hidden things are more eager to reveal themselves. I can see well enough of my own, but you keep your eyes peeled for anything hotel-like. Aye. Never been to a hotel, though. Not what even look like. What does a hotel look like? Is there even a way to describe that encompasses all the different kinds? Have you watched movies? Joyce seen a hotel in one of them. I mean, yeah. Are you telling me you'll find an American hotel out here in the middle of... The kid trailed off as he turned to look out the windshield. His eyes got wide like he'd seen a ghost. Ahead at a junction stood a single wall. All the remainder of a small building. Incomprehensible graffiti was scrawled across it like some kind of esoteric signage. I feel the markings looked fresh. Probably that's what the matter was, he reached over to squeeze my arm in a death grip. You better take that next ride over there, boss. Right, GPS says the truck stopped the left and we could use a refuel. No, your GPS is wrong. We've got to get out of here. Well, that place is trouble. It's not you're going for a shutdown damn near a, dec- a decade ago, and now it's... At first, I thought he was just whining. Something changed that real quick. I still don't always some note in his voice or the sudden prickling on the back of my neck. But either way, my foot slammed down on the brake pedal. Dangerous? Uh, yeah. To our right, there's another gas station not too far. We go that way. I craned my neck to look around us. It's all in the deepening dark as of late evening. Nothing was happening near here. It felt like nothing had happened for years. Well, nothing was smoking the kid rigid, so I turned right. He follows his advice. That night we found nothing. I saw that place again. Crimson columns along the walls, a dried up pond in the middle. A base at the centre of that with dark crystals growing out from it like scabs from a festering wound. There were chaos fiends there. A hippogriff, a dragon, some lizards running about. As if those cursed crystals were nothing to worry about. In came darkness. I kept trying for hours. Dawn broke and sunlight wore my feathers. But still I persisted. Storm got up and got ready for the day. But still I persisted. I was just about to give up when I finally got another glimpse. 
little lizard was looking at me. I couldn't hear what it said as it reached out. But I had to make a guess it would be... Uh, pretty. It all became dark again. Maybe he tucked me inside his shirt. I caught a glimpse of the path he took. The vision ended as he passed through that place's doorway into a corridor. Oh, morning, boss. The fat in the bathroom was still struggling to billow the steam from Storm's shower of their room. He stood in front of me, quizzical and clean, cow-eyed. Trying to impress me with proactiveness as the morning before, perhaps. I feigned a stretch and a yawn. Good morning. You doing okay? Yeah, yeah, why would let me? You seem kind of restless just now, and, uh... I don't mean to pry, but I feel bad seeing you sleep like this, sir. What do you mean? Well, there's only one bed, you let me have it. But now you're sleeping on that rickety wood chair. I don't feel good about that. Man, I'm supposed to be the one helping you here. I don't worry about it. This is how I always sleep. I know you have the bed out of kindness. It just so happens I don't like laying down. Oh, uh, some kind of peacock thing, or is it a uh, you thing? None of your damn business thing. Well, fuck me for trying to be nice. With all due respect to you, you kind of cunt. A guilty is charged. You ready to head out? Uh, yeah. So this time, it's really forget about my own voice for this. Let's head out to the tailor. It's something new for Storm. So, what do you have in mind for today? A little errand. I call here about the tailor near the town hall. I think we go there and get some nicer clothes. Oh, thanks. I like that, yeah. You're going to be coy about it. I was really thinking of buying some clothes, but... I'll keep the money for something else. I'll deal with it. I shouldn't be too expensive. Oh, thanks, boss. I figured it wasn't right. Walking around with Storm wearing the clothes he was. It was humiliating. For myself and for him. Unfortunately, a cursory exploration of any clothing store in town only confirmed my suspicions. Even with his horns and tail out of the equation, none of the basic brands on offer carried anything minotaur-sized. Another option, I asked around and learned about the local seamstress, and called to arrange things. She's an old hunchback lady whose eyes and ears are retired without her some years back. For as long as her fingers worked, she had resolved to do the same. Help support her kids, grandkids and great-grandkids. She provided the overalls the local farmhands used. There were dozens of them in all sizes, so you could pass by and grab one without much fuss. A sturdy material. I could cut a hole for the kid's tail on his backside myself with a sharp knife. It probably wouldn't tear further. She also takes some clothes of mine and alter, or butcher, them for Storm. Mine would definitely appreciate a custom tailored outfit more than the overalls. There's no question it'd be more presentable in dress shirt and khakis. However, oh, making it work could take her a lot of time, and perhaps the whole day. I weighed the options and chose to. There are more clothes on this trip than I'd honestly need. I could part ways with most of them. Now they don't even wear some of them more than once or twice per year. When we got there, Taylor changed her mind, saying it wouldn't take too long. We just wanted two hours and off their short trip back to the hotel to get a few shirts and pants. Rich became three when the grandkids showed up from the back room, requiring a good portion of attention. Then five came in a lunch break and ended up costing us the whole goddamn day after all. While she was off doing a thing, I went around town asking people about the hotel. I was successful on that front. Storm followed from a distance, enjoying a fine day of looking like a human. I had a smile plastered on his face the whole time. We turned to the tailor a few times over the course of the day until it was all finally ready. Every time the old seamstress took a measurement, his grin grew wider. Each moment she ignored his bovine features was proof her concord kept. Like Icarus, born aloft on giddy childish energy, Storm's tail beat against his back. 
At least until she swore him to hold still, giving his thrashing tail a tug for emphasis. Storm looked at me with all the horror of a man made real as the frailty of his hopes. Peacock fed the wings and wax promises, were all the separating him from plunging back into the hotel he'd become accustomed to. In an instant he froze up, his joy inverted. He floundered in an emotional freefall like a skydiver whose parachute won't open. I tried my damnedest not to laugh, but the levity on my face kept his panic at bay. Realization soon hit him in a terminal velocity. The old woman had already forgotten she ever noticed his tail. With the ensemble complete, he came forward to look at himself in the full-length mirror. The mirror was a hazy thing, rusted and with green, lichen-like blotches on the corners. Storm gazed at it, shifting left and right to check himself out. Yeah, Jack, it might be too hot for this climate, at least during the day. Are you sure you want to keep it on? Well, it's the best part. Man, it's like I came straight out of one of those movies I saw on TV. Oh, what do you mean by that? He shrunk back into uncertainty, seemed to have an awkward time explaining it. Well, you know, no one wears second-hand football jerseys in the movies, right? Well, that's what I had. It's what my mom could get me when I was growing up. I had those really thin polyester shirts from the factory down south, but they wouldn't last long. Since I have horns and they get stuck and, oh, yeah. Well, in the movies it ain't like that. People don't wear clothes like that, you know? They have cool haircuts and everything's just stylish. I still couldn't quite figure out what movies he meant, besides just thinking he already looked good enough to be in a movie. Maybe I should take it as a compliment. These were my clothes, after all. You shouldn't compare yourself to actors like that. It isn't fair. You don't know they have whole teams with their makeup prepare their clothes, right? Normal people can't look like that. But I am looking like that right now, like one of those punk guys. Well, that's why I pierced my ear in the first place, you know. I was wanting to uh, look like this just for a day. Kid, are you serious? Calling my clothes, of all things, punk? For a tough guy in a rough place, you're pretty damn sheltered. Certainly for a day, those clothes are yours to keep. And I can't say I'm surprised you want to look punk. The ear gauge did give it away. I didn't even get it pierced around these parts. It's a tattoo parlour or something. Oh, uh... Uh, yeah, so, well, back then, it was some years ago, I just turned 18. I was running a while away from home when there was this well, gang. I joined up with them and was told I had to impress. So I got the idea of sneaking into a farm and uh, again the needle gun they used to tag cattle. Yeah, so that happened. Things got complicated later, so I left, but I did actually want the ear thing. It makes me feel more intimidated, I guess. More than normal. We all never liked me much. Even Mom sure as hell didn't. After a while, I just accepted it. What can I even say to that? Graciliano Ramos couldn't have written a more tortured kid. We we'll shuffle our feet in silence. While well, the seamstress checked every bill of the cash had fogged over, I took the initiative to break it. You do look good. With the clothes and the gauge. Style and edge. Oh, thanks, boss. Once more we drove around, this time following my grandpa's notes. We went off-road often. When it got real bumpy, Storm rolled a blanket I kept in the back seat around his horns. They wouldn't gouge the car's ceiling every time he bounced up and down. He's lucky the car's a piece of shit not worth the cost of caring about every scuff and bruise. I thought I'd have him lying down in the back seat. And Grandpa's maps kept, kept us from getting lost. Didn't lead us to any new revelation. Packed in some big war, World War II maybe, some general or other got in the head that all the places shot at most often on returning planes should be the places reinforced. I didn't think about the places that weren't hit. And if they were, those were the fatal spots. Planes weren't even coming back to get inspected. So all the blank spots on Grandpa's maps, were they his missteps and missed opportunities? Or were they what kept him from dying out in that hellhole? 
On the way back into town, we saw a car parked on the road shoulder with a hood pulled up. There are three people, two men, one woman, sitting on the ground or leaning against the bumper as they watched us pass. I made no motion to pull over. We left them behind. The kid couldn't keep quiet about it. Yeah, I think they'll be all right. Why does it matter? They're probably robbers hoping to score a new car to this man for scrap. If we stop, we might even get killed. How do you know that? That guy's on the force, that's what I've heard of from the hinterlands. Happens every other day. They had a very moon-like groan. You're a cop. Kids, did he fancy himself a rebel? Would he want to test his metal against the man? He was unsure of himself, like he's almost humiliated just sitting next to me. It was, like quite a while ago. Oh, uh, okay. Why, you do something you regret, Storm? Uh, no, sir. And why is your voice two tones higher? I ain't have to worry. As I said, I'm not an officer anymore. I don't care if you've broken the law. Besides, you are under my wing. Can't you get sent to jail for your job's done? Oh, uh, thanks, sir. You're welcome. You don't care to know what I did? No. If you like talking, go on ahead. Well, what if I killed someone? What do you want to know about that? He's so sure of himself with that cocky grin, like a calf or a dog leaping about inviting me to play along. His eyes, too, glistening, softened by his smile, focused on my face, not the bulge of a gun in my pants. Well? His voice was a rumbling bass with a thick accent and sudden bouts of sharpness, like glass shards hid me the beach's sand. I still had a hint of boyhood in it, too. A man's voice changes when he kills and gets away with it. When you learn murder can be good enough solution to your problems, it leaves a stain behind. I hear plenty of that type of voice, but it was my time on the forest when I visited the hidden lands of my dad and grandpa. I was going to thank God that storm still sounded right as rain. You probably couldn't get a fly, let alone another person. If it wasn't the horns and hooves, I guess pickpocket. Yeah, that seems more up your alley. Why, are you saying I'm weak? Your eyes are too soft. If you were a killer, you'd be... different. Oh, okay, fine. I didn't kill no one. I joined a gang, also stole some stuff. Is it his gangs in his hellhole? What kind did you join? I wasn't here. Tried living in the city for a while. Didn't work out, though, so I came back. What did you do in your time in the gang? Oh, nothing. Didn't have the guts to go through with their initiation. Oh, good. And the stealing? No oh, food. No shit. Well, what do you mean by that? You're a fucking charmless, homeless, sleeping in a hole in the wall. No shit, you stole food. A wood in your position. Is that all you ever stole? Just food to get by? Yeah. I know it ain't much, but it's enough that I always get nervous around cops. That they'll figure out any moment and come for me. Oh, they don't have anything better to do. Seeing food to survive is insignificant. Minimal harm, no social danger, little to no room for moral reproach. Whatever damage it does cause is negligible. I excuse criminal terrification, so... Well, long story short, it's not a crime. If you do anything else criminal when you try to join that gang, you're all clear. Let me just say, you're right to avoid people who could start shit, what with you being charmless and all. So you're telling me I'm not a criminal? Yeah, hurry up, I cleanse you of all wrongdoing, my son. Go and sin no more. Damn. Thanks, boss. You're welcome. A sigh escaped from his throat, hitched, nearly straining at the seams. He had a soft, dreamy kind of smile after all that. That really lifted that heavier weight from his shoulders. 
I think it's even softer than I thought. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a cop. Being a hero sounded nice. Thought people would like me if I was one. Well, you should say that. People are sure as shit don't like cops, and being one doesn't mean you're a hero, in fact. Uh, never mind. Well, now you have a charm, you could become one. I wouldn't recommend it, but it ain't possible. You don't really think so? I was one, why can't you? Well, I really can, can't I? No, I'm human. Now that people see you as human. Oh, right. Well, it's still good. Don't think I'll try becoming a cop, though. Gave up on that a long time ago. Don't think being a man is what goes well with being a good person. And all at once, Storm deflated back into himself. Had to get the big ball of emotions a break. Reckon he had a lot of highs and lows built up to rock it between. Why'd you say that? Well, it's what the legend says, sir. The mind always hungry for human flesh, so they locked him up in the labyrinth, ain't that right? Yeah. But so what? Well, I'm just saying. Seems they're not meant to be the good guys, or? Legend says that God killed my great 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 grandfather, whatever. You won't catch me getting my head smashed in with a rock. It's all just old stories. Sure, bad stuff tends to happen in cycles. People like us are just cursed like that. We can't avoid suffering the same fate. So if you want to be a cop, there's nothing stopping you. I was saying you should, but you can. Are you for real? Sure. Well, once we get on this Minotaur's Hotel thing, if you really want to go for your contacts, get you all set up on the right track. It ain't easy becoming a cop, but with time and effort you could do it. Man, that's so... Well, I can't believe it. I can become a cop. You can. Not saying you should. Oh, I got the righty, boss. Don't think I'll go down that road anyhow. Nowadays, I don't see much appeal to it. I feel as good knowing I could if I wanted to. Wait, don't you need a high school degree? Yes. Oh, well, that sucks. You dropped out. Yeah, school was never kind to me. Waiting where corks on my horns. I took every ounce of my willpower not to laugh at that. I reckon that was humiliating, but I'm just playing devil's advocate here. My car's roof would probably love the idea. Well, I mean, yeah. But my horns were small back then. No way I'd poke someone's eye out. Anyway, I got sick of it and stopped going. Never stopped hearing about it at home. Mom would tell me about it every fucking day. Shit, that's rough. I get it, though. I don't think I'd have stayed in school either. Hey, you could get a degree now, thanks for the charm. Yeah, I could. You should. Well, I might. You will. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Good boy. Now enough chatting. That hotel's not going to find itself. Aye, 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 boss. Storm peered out the window of the renewed vicar, examining every distant scaffold and bump. All his newfound ambition for the future seemed to be funneled into our current job. See, old bastard, positive reinforcement does work. The kid woke up around 2am, fidgeted in his bed for ten or so minutes and looked over at me. He stared for at least five more minutes for the sign and definitely had to be asleep. Making sure my eyes were shut, I suppose. Like a cat, he laid a hoof on the floor. Like a dancer, he grazed it forward so as to not make a sound. Fought him like a hawk, in my own way. He wasn't going to get the upper hand on me, that was so damn sure. He walked to the desk, knelt, opened the drawer. He reached in. Wow. I held my breath and I had to remind myself I didn't keep my gun there. The kid felt around, real careful. Something hard knocked against the side of the drawer as he shifted it. He paused. Some cloth scratched against the particle board. 
and I'll tell you his thick fingers against my soft leather wallet. He opened it. He stared. I took a breath, got to thinking. Can't say I don't understand. Reckon I do the same in his position. Not only an idiot would let the opportunity pass. Take some money and runs. I give him a 30 second head start. If he goes back to bed thinking I'll fall for it, he's got another goddamn thing coming. If he tries to do anything funny with me, oh, he can't see as well as I can in the dark. I'll give me the advantage. There was a tap against the sheets of the bed. His tail was twitching. He reached in and brushed a finger over the bills. His tail stopped. His hand went limp too. I heard a sniffle. Storm even pulled the money out. He exhaled hard. I'd have been holding a whole lungful that whole time and sit my wallet back where it belonged. He hoofs at his not to thieve and it all self back to his bed. The next few hours pretended to sleep, just like I was. Don't you notice how much I was smiling? Is it odd to say I felt proud of him at that moment? As the storm broke, we got up and got ready for the day. Storm won't even look at me. He was hunched over his plate, eyes down, all throughout breakfast. Before waking up, I decided not to talk about it. With all that guilt reeking off of him, I had no other choice. Sometimes people need punishment of their own peace of mind. Why not well get it over with? Uh, before we head, I'd like to have a word with you. Well, what is it? A streak of sunlight flashed from the window onto his face. The wetness in his eyes, glimmering like diamonds, struck the words out of my mouth like an open palm. What did I even have said to him? That I understood and was proud he didn't steal my money? I was proud he did what he needed to survive? Curse upon curse piled onto us. Don't grab hold of life first, it won't even blink as it wrings your neck. Who should run off with the money? In fact, he tried, Joe's not an idiot, and that's something I can appreciate. Words of feather flock together, I suppose. I can't tell him that. Uh, boss? I'm sorry, I was lost in thought. It's just... I felt the feather at the back of my neck ruffling and itching and ended up blowing out the first thing that came to mind. I like to believe that what makes us good is not what we want to do, but what we stop ourselves from doing. Or how much we hold ourselves back from doing what we shouldn't. We all want awful things sometimes, don't we? Because we might need them to survive, or we want this or that, or sometimes just because fucked up stuff can give you a kind of a high. Have you ever wanted something like that? Something that makes you feel like the worst person in the world? You can just pop out of nowhere. A fucked up idea, and it makes you feel like a sick freak. Or maybe you feel like everything's going too good for you, and that can't be right. It can't last for long. So you do whatever you can to get caught and kicked out. You might as well, since it's going to happen anyway, and the weight is just unbearable. Have you ever felt that? Uh, yes, sir. I'm on the same boat. I feel it every day. But there's something I... My dry tongue glued itself to the roof of my mouth. I always gave up on the entire thing, but kept telling myself I had to say it. Even if I wasn't sure I believed it. There's one thing I know for sure. What we think about in those darker moments doesn't make us bad people. What matters is whether or not we give in to it. There's something good in having the strength to hold on to what's right, even to the last possible second. After we expect someone to get away with the crime scot-free, then turns around as the right thing instead. I had to swallow the lump in my throat to stop myself from saying too much. This wasn't about me. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good. Oh, thank you. It won't happen again, sir. You promise? 
Yeah. We stood there like a pair of statues. I didn't know what else to say, and by the fidgeting of his legs, neither did he. Yeah, that should have been it. Time to head out and search for the hotel. Still, my feather stayed ruffled. More words crawled up my throat, and I let them out for I could think them through. It's all over and done with. You can come with me. There's no future for you out here. I can help you make a fresh start back in the city. Didn't even know if I could do it. Didn't even know what I'd do after this adventure was done. But there I was, making a promise I knew I couldn't keep. I reached out to give him a half hug, or maybe like a pat on the back. But then he wrapped me up in his arms and started squeezing my lungs out. He lifted me off the ground into the air I could say anything. Squished as I was, I could only breathe in his stench and wiggle my legs. It took a while, but when he calmed down, he let me go. Finally. Okay, enough horsing around. Let's head out and find that damned hotel. Oh yeah, let's go. Ah, before I forget, there's one thing you should know. I don't sleep. At all. Oh, uh, good to know. So I walked out to my car. I couldn't stop asking myself why I'd promised to help him in the first place. His hands holding my wallet, tail tapping against the bed. The way he couldn't hold in the sniffle when his fingers touched the bills. You sad, sick piece of shit. You like having power over the kid, don't you? Makes it real damn easy to make him do whatever you want, huh? Do you really still think you can play the good guy? You'll just disappoint you when he finally sees what a sorry excuse for a man you are. You know that, right? Or maybe you like that he's dirty like you. You wouldn't even be able to rate to him otherwise, would you? Maybe birds of a feather do flock together. He was already done. At least he'd be more motivated of that little pep talk. That was reason enough to do it. It might help us reach the hotel. As long as he believed that promise, he wouldn't try to put anything else like that. We'd both be safer for it. So I told myself that's all he was. That had to be it. The further I drove from the inn, the less sure I became. So, today we'll do some work here and stop in at the Colonel's. Colonel's estate was the only place in the hinterlands with any decent greenery. A big, for the area, so that walled off farm with a mansion squarely in the middle. We went there and announced ourselves to the porter. It was a whole hour to convince him to call it the mansion. Don't think he wanted to let anyone in at all, but our insistence won out. It's another three hours while the widow, Mrs. Pidade, gave us the time of day. The smart young woman wasn't even in her forties. Quite much more must have been like living a man over a hundred years old. She kept quiet until I mentioned I was the old foreman's grandson. Then her eyes changed. I'd never met my grandpa, at least not when he worked for the colonel. The stories must have reached her years. She brought Storm and I into the mansion's office. Offered coffee, liquor, sweets. Storm smiled, almost nodded, but I coughed and declined for he could do it. Didn't your mother teach you not to accept food from strangers? Yeah, it was the usual chit-chat. How was the capital? Did we enjoy the drive down here? What was the weather like? It all felt as if it had read from a list of mandatory topics. We answered with a handful of words. She gave us her next polite question, all of it without a smile or the slightest inflection in her voice. After she asked how we were enjoying the hinterlands, and I answered with a not at all, we agreed to drop the masks and got down to business. Hey, Mr. P. Dade, I have the most sensitive matter to discuss, which I hope you can appreciate. Inherited my grandfather's unfinished business. I was informed that during his service to the colonel there was a most regrettable incident causing the death of a local family. I preferred not to dig those old bones up, but I am afraid they were never put to rest in the first place. Not with a proper respectful Christian burial. You are the colonel's heir, I am told. If these mortal remains are in your possession, I ask that they hand them over to me so I may put their souls to rest. In the name of Christ. Winnow's flat eyes bored into me and then storm, looking over the zippers of our disguises. Not finding them and then looking again, though sheer force of will could reveal the truth. She lit a cigarette and made sure to blow the smoke our way. 
I know what you're talking about. I've seen those bones myself. A frightful thing that one is to believe they were human, as it is said. She looked out the window at the arid landscape behind her estate. You may have them. Be frank with you, I'm a superstitious woman. How's in vengeful bones can only bring tragedy. Besides, it is the Christian thing to do. She called the servant in and told him to retrieve the chest. Oh, while you are here, could I convince you to take your grandfather's position? I would only hint of steel into my voice. You require a P's services. A diary, the Colonel's relatives have been most troublesome since his death. There's a disagreement on the matter of the inheritance, and I wish to secure both my position and my safety. They have thrown many baseless accusations my way. She smiled. Lines on her face made bile bubble up into my throat. I need as many watchful eyes as possible. My late husband said much about your family's talent in that regard. The best form in the world has ever seen. Those were his words. I can pay you well, better than any job in the city ever could. I'm grateful for your office, Miss P. Dade. It's not often our talents are so appreciated. Sadly, I must decline, where I have arrangements overseas that I cannot abandon. Academic matters, you see. A pity. My late husband, old-fashioned as he was, never could recognise your grandfather's real worth. She didn't look to storm, put a hand on his knee before she could get any ideas. He may look like family, but he is not a P. He doesn't have what you're looking for. Uh, such a pity. She went quiet, and so did I until the chest was carted in. I held my breath and opened it. My family inside were broken, smashed, crushed bits of bone. Every last smidgen of marrow sucked clean. What had been left intact was covered in teeth marks. As for their skulls, all of them had been cracked open like pumpkins. Even then, however, I could piece them together enough to see how truly non-human they were. This is it. Uh, thank you, Mrs. P. Dade. She stuffed her cigarette in the ashtray, breathing out through her yellow teeth. Before you go, a word of advice. You should not tarry too long in the hinterlands. Things have become quite tense since my husband's passing. Is that a threat? Earnest advice. I can give you that much, seeing how professional you are. That's why I like hiring people from the capital. You get straight to the point and no bullshitting about. Her eyes drifted off to the window and all the greenery beyond it. Her gaze softened or perhaps a wave of depression washed over her. The colonel thought that eating them would give him eternal life. I've never seen a man more afraid of death than him. Knowing how long he lived, I wouldn't be surprised if he was right. But by the time I met him, he barely had a mind left in that head of his, and his body had shriveled to half its size. Personally, I don't think that was a life worth living. But some of his relatives might disagree, and quite a few of them enjoy a roasted fowl. Oh, thank you for the warning. She got up and pointed at the door. Now go. May your salt never lose its savour, and pray that we never have to deal with each other again. Go up as well, not bothering to shake your hand. May your salt never lose its savour, Mrs. Pidade. I will pray for your safety. Part of the car on the road shoulder and turn off the engine. There's a cloud of yellow butterflies on the road, taller than three houses stacked together and thicker than the worst fog in the world. It would be impossible for any curve in the road, let alone see if there's a car coming from the other direction. Didn't plan on dying just yet, so waiting for the pass was the only option. Oh, this happens around this time of year. The butterflies are having their breeding season. Horrible, disgusting, loathsome creatures. You don't like butterflies? No, they just discount Martha and get in the way. I swear, every time I've tried performing the right with butterflies nearby, it's gone to shit. Something in the interviews were getting magical effects to stick. So, now that you mention that, I was thinking about that ritual you did to make my charm, boss. I mean to ask you something, sir. Don't know if it's forbidden or anything of that sort, but I thought it's worth a shot. Well then, shoot. 
Could you teach me some of your magic? Yeah, that's a tricky question. First off, don't call it magic. I know some rites and mysteries, which, as the name implies, are meant to be secretive. And in most circumstances, I have to say no. But you are my protégé. I'm right extending some of my humanity to you. Let us allow me to teach you a couple of things, at least. Yeah, come to think of it, there is some stuff you should probably know. Get anything flashy, though. Oh, so you can't teach me to throw fireballs? Idiot. Those charms alter people's minds such a way that you and I can walk around like normal humans. You want to be a glorified matchstick? Big citizen flashes mean it's not worth learning. Besides, you want to kill someone, a gun's quicker and just overall better. Again, anyone can do that, sorry. Plus, I specialise in more practical stuff, like different kinds of charm crafting and all that. On the way to the inn, we'll stop by the market. We'll need some materials. Animal entrails, flowers, human bones. Now, yeah, more like some bags of salt bee and paper clips. All that thought. I think we can make it through now. We'll talk some more about rights later. Now keep your eyes peeled for the hotel. So, we'll perform three rites tonight. It was later at night when the darkness made it impossible to continue our search. We turned to our room at the inn, and after we'd settled ourselves, the kid had begged me to hurry up with teaching him magic. Taking a deep breath, I kept my palm pressed firmly against my thigh and reminded that we weren't doing shitty parlour tricks. Our supplies sat on the bed between us. A sack of coarse salt from the local mines with a beatific tapir painted on the side. A box of paper clips and two six packs of the second cheapest beer in the store. We could be entirely classless now, could we? Let's start with the simplest one, a purification rite. All mythicals are more or less vulnerable to the right to miss defilement, but for sake of simplicity, let's just call it bad energy. It's not really a form of energy, it isn't necessarily bad if you know what you're doing, but for now, let's go with that. Back on topic, anyone can get bad energy by coming to contact with impure things like blood, waste, sexual fluids, or just any kind of filth. Bad energy can disrupt many kinds of rites. Some mythicals are so vulnerable to it they can get sick if they accrue too much. Lucky for us, there are a number of ways to cleanse ourselves. A good long bath with lots of running water does the trick in most circumstances. But a quick way for us feathery and furry mythicals is to use salt. The iodized shit they sell in most stores is alright in a pinch. The best result, you want good old halite. Rock salt straight from the earth, or flor de sal. Just grab a decent handful and sprinkle it over your head like this. Storm kept a close watch on me as I demonstrated, letting the coarse grain sit on my head feathers and fall on my shoulders. He did the same. Looked around the room, then back at me, hoping he did it right. I nodded. Oh, I don't feel any different. Yeah, bad energy isn't something most of us can really feel, but cleaning it off's important for rights regardless. Other thing. In folklore, people use salt circles to ward off evil, right? Turns out it's a very functional way to shield yourself from apparitions and stop bad energy from coming in. Take the sack and pour some salt along the windowsill in front of the doorway. Storm popped up to obey, pouring a line along the edge of the door with careful precision. He looked back at me, a bit quizzical. I nodded. With yet more care, he poured a small strip of salt along the windowsill. Again, he looked back at me, like a confused puppy waiting for approval. I nodded. Oh, what now? That's it, you just formed your first purification right. Aren't you proud of yourself? Oh, that's lame. I was expecting something cooler, like summoning electricity from my hands or creating light. Can't you keep and know your damn place you want to learn anything bigger than... I clenched my jaw, took a breath. I don't worry, I still have two more rights to teach you. This next one's not flashy either, but it could save your life. Handed me the sack of salt and sat back down on the bed with a huff. A petulant fucking child. Out of the breath. As a mythical being, we're vulnerable to more than just bad energy. There's this... thing. Some people call it recursion, others call it karma or whatever, but it doesn't really need a name. What matters is this thing makes sure some patterns repeat. It conspires for things to happen in certain ways. 
And sometimes you might be hitting some dangerous pattern starting up again. Or maybe like you're stuck in a rut, going round and around and spiraling out of control. Lucky for us, there's a way to disrupt it. Here, take one of these. I grabbed a handful of paper clips and held it out to him. I probably won't believe it at first, but remember what I just said about spirals? What shape is this? A spiral, right? And what's it do? Hold shit together. So if you're having a situation where you feel like you're circling some dangerous thing that's happened before, just take one of these and break it in your fingers. The more pieces the better. Then toss them over your left shoulder and don't look back. Ask for your left and you can't look to where they fall. You're leaving the old pattern behind with this gesture. It'll only stick to you if you follow the right. Storm was clearly trying not to pout out of politeness. If you want to give you something to pout about, God damn it, will you stop? He twisted the clip as fast as he could and then tossed the pieces over his shoulder, all while looking at me like it's some humiliating prank. Fuck, this is so lame. Can you teach me any fun rights? Oh, we have no idea what I have in store for you. Oh, why? Well, can't wait. I promise it'll be the best one yet. You're going to love it. With one hand, I pulled up some music on my phone. With the other, I pulled off two cans and a six-pack. How old are you again? Twenty-one. Yeah, then. I tossed him his can and cracked mine open, then exhaled and shut my eyes to gather my thoughts, waiting him to ask a question, or at least open his beer. Unruly fucking kid. There's no clue what kind of danger we get until we fall down a spiral of recursion. And he thinks he deserves to learn the fun rights. I teach him anything special. Definitely just use his steal my wallet for real. I've been going easy on him. If it was my dad who sat like that, he'd have learned real goddamn quick keep his head down his mouth shut. Maybe I should... What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm going to run away with the money and goddamn it, I would have if I were in his place. But he didn't. He's not a bad kid. Right, he's better than me by a mile. Yeah, if I can't find the hotel, he'd be able to help him out. That's what I'm sure better than anything I've done ever since joining the force. Uh, boss, uh, what are we doing? I shook away all those thoughts. What does it look like? We're having a beer. And what we do, you and I are going to have a little talk about what being a mythical is like. Is that even a right? Yep, you might not recall. That charm of yours needs to be powered up a bit more. And we can do that some good old alcohol and talking. Thankfully, you only needed a fire to craft your charm, not to strengthen it. Storm set down in his can. His gauge year flicked and he pacified it with a caress. Does he even realise that thing carries a piece of me? Does the understanding give me even more of myself by doing this? The right form to craft your charm is called Oath of Kinship. This particular method of charm, charm crafting is based on taking what pieces of humanity we have in ourselves and honouring them, raising them up so we may. Gain a place as kin of humanity, like family. And to craft that charm, I had to extend to you my own oath by putting a part of myself in that gauge of yours. Once humanity is a living, breathing thing, it needs to be cleansed of any impurity which may corrupt it, and must be tended like a flame. To purify your gauge regularly, alcohol or running water and soap once per day if possible, some sort of purification two or three times a week. I took a swig of my beer. Am I talking? We all kindle it. If its fabrication is high quality, and should its flame go strong enough, a charm like what you've got there could give you a perfect indistinguishable disguise. You'd have a lot to work with in terms of materials, but... I know why you around these rights. I didn't want to mention back then, but I am a trained occultist. Wait, so... No, I'm not a fucking devil. I didn't steal your soul. What I'm trying to say is that you take good care of that charm for many years when they may get to that level. Maybe even better than a passport. And why don't you use this kind of charm? I'll never see you with your passport. I had one, but it stopped working a while back. That kind of charm can fizzle out when the right master dies. But I don't worry, I have no intention of dying any time soon. You can trust me on that one. Took another few seconds, but at last he opened his beer with a bit of smile and took his first sip, all in one motion. 
Uh, there's a mon ball is shooting the shit for a while. Hello, boy. What do you say we get to it then, huh? Uh, I guess I gotta think up some conversation topics. Well, uh. So that's how we started. We storm getting the very basics out of the way first. What's it like living in the capital? How's the weather there? They asked me how many other mythicals I know. How many there are? What kinds would we expect to find in the area? Didn't take long for him to lose his shines and get down to the real questions. Like, well, if I'm with someone in that way and say they put their hands on my horns, what would they feel? The charm affects their perception cognition. If they were to grab your horns, they wouldn't notice it. It doesn't change who you are, just what they see, feel and remember. Weird. Wouldn't it be easy to just change your body? Can't you do stuff like that with magic? Nah, it's much harder. There's no right can do something like that. I know about gods and heroes of legend shape-shifting. Those aren't around anymore. And, gosh, I can't believe I'm asking this. Uh, what's it like during, uh... I'll admit it was fun letting him squirm. He looked away, cheeks fresh enough to see through his black fur. I leaned back and laughed after down my beer. You know what I mean, you cunt. Sorry, I'm afraid I don't. You're just pretending to be stupid. Oh, you're calling your boss stupid now, kid? And I went through all the trouble of pulling you out of that cave and teaching you how to look human? Oh, no, sir. Sorry, sir. That's better. Now, I can as well say what's on your mind. I just want to know what it's like during uh, 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 sex. I couldn't hold back another laugh, and my display came out far too bird-like for my taste. It was nice, though. The other kid did seem to find it odd. Same principle applies. They'll see and feel you as human if they should notice otherwise. They touch your fur, they'll feel like skin. They kiss you, they'll just think your mouth is a human one. They won't hear your hooves, nor they notice your tail. If you go too far from your charm, oh, they'll see every damn thing. That's why it's always good to have more than one on you. Once in a while, you might find a human who's open-minded enough to know the truth, but it's best not to share it too often. So as you guessed, dating a human can be difficult. If you're gay, it's a bit better. At least it's easier to just hook up. Uh, excuse me? Gay? Yeah, did I stutter? You're a fr uh, gay? Guilty as charged. That a problem? Uh, 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 no, no, sir. Just surprise a guy like you. I mean, you don't act like one is all. Oh, you got those horns and hooves of yours, but I don't see you eating grass. He legs his head like I just reached over and smacked him across the mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. God fucking damn me. Nah, I should apologise. Kind of killed the mood, didn't I? No, no, it's just... I uh, wasn't expecting it, is all. I really don't have an issue with it, sir. If anything, I think being gay is cool. Cool? God damn it, Stormy, you're killing me here. Hey, it's true. Uh, we don't get much around you, but I've seen some movies and... And? and? I don't know, there's some gay people in them. I thought it was cool, all right? I'd much rather be gay and live somewhere nice than me straight around these parts. You're cool, is what I'm saying. And I'm glad you're gay. I tried. Believe me, I try, I tried not to laugh again. Yeah, hey, don't laugh at me. I'm serious here. Are you kidding me? If you don't stop laughing, I'll be killing you, all right? I sure will try me. Give me a good fucking reason to make you regret it. When I'm done, you can cry to the bitch you are and beg to do anything I want. Anything for me to forgive you. Okay, okay, I'm stopping. God damn, I needed that. Look, it's just... Oh, sure, keep believing gay, being gay is stylish and cool, you sweet, naive child. It's charming. Just hope you never learn about dating apps. Well, you piece of shit, now you have to tell me what those are. Nah, you're better off not knowing. Well, spill it. I know you want to. Okay, so nowadays you can just run a program on your phone to meet folks. Create a profile for yourself and you see everyone else around you made one too. See who's nearby. Send messages and stuff. 
can just use those to hook up. You can host, live in a busy area and know what you're doing. You can get someone to suck your dick in no time. It almost looked like he didn't believe me at first. The longer he seemed to think about it, the bigger his grin became. I bet I could score a ton with those data apps. At least now that I look human. Sure, after you lose a kilo or twelve. Damn, Pete, why you gotta be like that? Shit, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean to come across you like that. I just wasn't thinking. I just think you're cool, okay? So I'm not gonna put in that to words, but you don't have to be an asshole about it. Look, I'm sorry. I'm just lying, okay? Just being a cunt for no reason because I'm fucked up in the head. You look great. You're not even fat, you're just robust, and guys love that. You're big in all the right places. Nothing wrong the way you look. I'm half full, man. There's everything wrong the way I look. You don't have to lie to make me feel better. I'm a fucking peacock, what's your point? There's nothing wrong with me, and I sure as hell is nothing wrong with you. You know what? You're right, I do look great. It's about damn time you recognise my good looks. So, what shall I like the most about me? Don't make it weird. Don't fuck this up. Don't go too far. Look at him. Kids want it real fucking bad. Never a single good thing said about him his whole goddamn life, probably. Tell him what he wants to hear, and I bet he'll... Oh, God. Sure, I'll bite. My three favourite things about you. Your mouth that never stops going on and on. Your horns, when they leave marks on my car ceiling. And how much you smell like a barn. You know, that kind of tension got the kid cheered up. Guess I really can joke around without being an asshole about it. Oh, damn straight. My smell it really is something else, huh? Yeah, I just love how you can stink up the whole room. You can go out for a run to get just that tiny bit more pungent. Well, I'll do anything for you, babe. If you want, I can even roll around in the dirt a bit to add some spice. That will be necessary. Your basic stench is good enough already. The kid chugged the last of his can, tossed it over his shoulder, and then hopped up off the bed. Well, I'll be off then. Excuse me? Go out for a run like you ordered, sir. You better be ready for my stink when I get back. He was careful not to disturb the line of salt across the doorway too much as he headed out. And then there I was, left alone by my fucked up self. God damn it. I finished the rest of my beer, then got to clean it up from my rights. When Storm returned half an hour or so later, stinging up sweat and dusty fur, he crawled into bed to get some shut eye. While he drifted off to Dreamland, he spent a few hours trying to summon up another vision of that dark chamber of the crystals. I just couldn't get a grip on it. Get the occasional flash of movement, that might have just been me seeing things. Then now the beer seemed to have gone right through me. The more I focused, the more I felt the need to take a leak. It was about 3am when I gave up. I stood, careful not to wake Storm. For one thing, a guy of his size would snore like a goddamn chainsaw. We slept like a baby. When I glanced the other way, I saw movement in the light coming from under the curtains. I drew back one of the panels to get a better look. A line of salt Storm had put down, a handful of flies were buzzing around, walking all over it, even eating the grains. Weird. Salt was supposed to ward off that sort of defilement. Do you know what the hell to make of the site? Take the fingertip to wet it. Place it on a hopefully less fly touch part of the line and touch it to my tongue. It tastes like nothing. And that is where we're going to leave things. Got some more travelling to do. And we'll pick that up in the next build of Manitou Hotel. Or the next episode, I should say. The next build should be coming out soon, I think. But yeah, the next episode will be maybe in June, maybe early July. I don't actually know yet myself. But what I can tell you is that uh, next weekend we're going to wrap up Carl's Route in Echo. So that will be uh, three of the routes in Echo done. And then a bit later in the year, we'll go back and carry on with Flynn's and then Jenna's roots to get all of Echo done. But uh, we'll finish up with Carl next week. And just before I wrap up here, thanks as always to my donors on Kofi and Patreon. 
And my top patrons are Monolay, Evan King, Marcus, Cindy Dragowolf, Kopi, Spiderling, Grizz, Popot, Dissonance, Brandon Bradford, Anubis Silverwind, Ida Corval, Tiger Cub, Gunnar Muller, Ryan Hall, Bastian, Lark Huskerton, Besuksu, Kobus Visser, Kartek, and Burnt Toast. And if you want to support on Patreon, the links are all down in the description, same for my Kofi. But you don't have to, just enjoy and like the videos. And that's it for now. So until we return to Echo 2015 next weekend, bye for now. <laughs>